Essentially, genomics is breeding using DNA to help better predict how well an animal will perform in the future. DNA is passed from parents to offspring and is therefore central to breeding. The DNA profile of an animal is analysed through a hair or tissue sample and is compared to the DNA profile of older, more proven animals, also known as the reference population, looking for similarities. Performance data, ancestry data and genomic data are all combined on the animal itself, which then generates a more accurate prediction of the animal's genetic makeup, i.e. the EBI or your star indexes. The DNA is extracted from the hair follicles and analysed on a SNP chip. DNA is transmitted in chunks and genomic testing then identifies which DNA chunks have been passed from the parents to the offspring. The genotype is then analysed on animal traits such as milk production, carcass weight, etc. Genotyping both confirms and provides a lot of information on animals. So for example, parentage verification. A genotyped animal can have its sire and dam confirmed within a couple of weeks. Where a farmer is unsure of a sire, it can often identify the correct sire for them. It increases the reliability of the EBI and Eurostar figures, even before an animal has produced any offspring. If there's a question on the breed makeup, genotyping will allow for breed verification. It also can identify if an animal is a carrier for certain diseases or major genes, and obviously then traceability. So genotyping ensures that from birth, there is full traceability of every sample. We are currently working closely with the Department of Agriculture and the various tag suppliers to come up with the best solution around DNA and BBD sampling. There are currently technical and logistical challenges to incorporating both DNA and BVD into a single sample. But a new type of national tag for tagging newborn calves was trialled very successfully this spring in our DNA registration pilot, which takes a separate sample for both DNA and B BVD, which we hope will be available in the near future. The biggest benefit for dairy farmers of genotyping their dairy heifers is to identify the females of the highest genetic merit uh, to keep as replacements. Many dairy farmers have more hair for calves than they require and as a result, sell the excess replacements. So by genotyping, they can ensure that they retain the heifers with the highest genetic merit through the incorporation of genomic information in their indexes. As well as this, genotyping allows for parentage verification on. There is not exactly a best age to genotype a heifer. This will depend on your system. The important thing is to have animals genotyped prior to selecting which heifers you wish to keep as replacements so that you can make the most informed selection decision. Many farmers have two or more stock bulls of the same breed running with their females during the breeding season. As a result, when calving season rolls around, it can be difficult to tell what bull is the sire of which calves. This is where genotyping and potentially DNA calf registration comes in. By having your bulls genotyped, you can then genotype your calves and get parentage verification on them to confirm who the sire is. As well as this, the cars will then go on to get a genomic evaluation, which will see, their, see a higher reliability on their indexes at a younger age. It's important to remember when you're genotyping that a genomic evaluation doesn't happen overnight. For dairy animals, it takes approximately three weeks from once we've received the hair sample for them to get a genomic evaluation. For beef animals, it depends if the sample is received before the next evaluation data cutoff date. For these cutoff dates, take a look at our publication schedule on our website. But typically for beef animals, it takes around 10 to 18 weeks, depending on when the sample is returned. Absolutely. Given the success of genotyping to date, the obvious benefits and the increasing interest from farmers and industry, it's a no-brainer. We will continue to invest our time and energy into growing the genotyping service and increasing adoption of the technology through programmes such as the DNA registration pilot. If you haven't genotyped before, the process is quite simple. Uh, you can call the Herd Plus office on 023-8820452 or by logging into your ICBF account, heading to services and selecting genomic services. And you can, this is how you can order your hair sampling kits. You place your order and within one to two working days, the hair cards should arrive on farm. In the pack, there'll be instructions and a return envelope. So you simply just need to pull the hair from the root of the tail, making sure to get as much of the roots as possible, place it in the hair card, pop it in the envelope and send it back to us and we'll get it off to the lab for you. The increase in reliability between 
the official genomic proof and the non-genomic proof is between 20 to 30 percent. The increase depends on the amount of information in the genomic evaluation. It equates to an animal having the equivalent of about 10 to 15 daughters in milk production. So currently myostatin testing is not part of the ICPF genomic service. However, if you contact Weatherbeast directly, they'll be able to do the test for you and they're able to use an existing genomic sample to do so. Genotyping is an excellent way to confirm the parentage of an animal. Provided that the bull in question is also genotyped, any samples from progeny of him will match up on the system. In the event that the sire is not genotyped and we are unable to find a match, the animal will still get an EBI or Eurostar evaluation based on the information extracted from the DNA sample. All issues around pedigree certs and statuses are dealt with by the pedigree breed societies and each society has their own set of rules. So you're best to contact them directly for more information on the pedigree status of your animals. The best way to tell if an animal is genotyped or not is to search them on animal search. If you look just below the pedigree information, you will see the genotype banner. A red banner indicates that there is no valid genotype available for the animal. So that means that they've either not been genotyped or they have been genotyped and the sample that was provided was invalid. A yellow banner indicates that the animal has been genotyped, but the genomics are not yet included in the genetic evaluation. A green banner indicates that the animal is genotyped and the genotype is included in the evaluation.